What's up everybody, I'm IGP and welcome back to Subnautica. Today we're back at the primary containment facility. Obviously we're getting closer and closer to the completion of this thing, so we're going to take a look again at the current state and the changes from when we last saw it. Also, just for you guys, thanks to a wonderful dude named Mobius on YouTube if you guys know him. If you aren't already, go ahead and subscribe to that dude, link is in the description below. But I will be showing you guys the sounds of the Sea Emperor the sounds that the Emperor is going to make trying to communicate to you. It sounds amazing. I hope you guys will enjoy it. I also want to go over a change that was made to the story itself. This was also brought up by Mobius, and it's a pretty drastic change. It has to do with the Karar bacterium and its origins, and we'll talk about that a little later. Now, we're going to go ahead and go through the prison as normal and experimental if you're playing it. You do not have the option to actually go through the doors. You have to type in unlock doors to be able to get in. Yes. So there's one thing, if you couldn't tell, the precursor droids or the alien droids, I, I actually don't even know the current name of these things, but the precursor droids as they were known are now spawning in the primary containment facility. They're not going to hurt me because I'm in creative, but they will definitely attack you and defend just like every other base. This guy is super interested in me. Let me go ahead and give you a quick little scan. And if you couldn't tell too, this whole pathway lights up as you approach it, the lights go away, and as you approach, they turn on. Just like most other precursor bases have different lights or different pillars and stuff that expand or light up as you approach them. Obviously, a lot of motion detecting or some other technology that the precursors had that we're not going to understand because we're just dumb humans. Why is that glowing so much? Good lord. Can we turn off bloom? Oh god, that now that looks ridiculous. Oh well, <laughs> that's that. And up here, the animated pillar is no longer I, I think it i don't even think it's moving anymore but it was kind of just cycling through the beginnings of the animation yeah, there's droids everywhere look at that and i think if we yeah if we approach certain relics or maybe all of them they all kind of animate they do that's amazing well some of them do you move you do not move do you move you do not move but this guy well the sword's not gonna move why would i think that nothing else i see moves just a few of them maybe they're in the works uh oh whoa that was laggy oh, hey there buddy do you need help getting out i got you wait can i even move you does not look like it okay never mind never mind so here we are entering the lab and you'll see a few differences here graphically the egg the cracked open egg is for some reason i don't know what's on the on the tips of those let me go ahead and scan it and see if that's changed yeah so i guess that's just going to reflect the uh the forcefully opening of the egg itself. The laser cutter just cutting straight down and taking the specimen out, or the baby emperor. There's another one over there, and look at this. <laughs> this is where the dissected uh, emperor juvenile will be, which I'm assuming was what was originally floating up here, which is now gone, but they're working on it. I I'm, I'm kind of afraid of what it's going to look like, if it's going to be, like, taking it too far, because, you know... Everyone seems to be just absolutely falling head over heels for these cute little turtle uh, emperor juveniles where I personally, I think they're cute, but I have no problem, you know, completely just cutting it up. I, I don't usually have an issue with that. I think you guys know that by now, but it would still be very weird to see one just kind of laying here being experimented on. This isn't, doesn't really look sanitary either. This looks some kind of like some kind of stone. Do you use that for operating tables? I guess it doesn't matter when you're desperate for a cure. All right, so jumping down into the aquarium. We're going to meet our friend, the Emperor. The beautiful creature. Which side do you pop up? I always forget. There you are. <laughs> Hi there. Yeah, so turtle. Very much like a turtle. So this is the part where it will be, I believe it will be animated. There's going to be a lot of cutscenes once this is done, but the Emperor is going to communicate again telepathically, and it's going to be translated so we can hear it in our language, English, or whatever you're playing in, I'm assuming. And then it will decide that I am safe and not a threat, and then I can swim down with it and enjoy the scenery and progress the story a bit. So some notable changes in the aquarium are that the teleporter is completely covered up with sand. This is also going to be part of another cutscene that's going to happen or another event that's going to take place. You can still see it. It's not completely covered, but it is covered and unusable. You cannot put the ion crystal in it to activate it because it's been you know idle for so long that all this sand is just collected i don't know how that works but i guess from the emperor getting its exercise and 
swimming around, dusting it up. Anyway, the part where you hatch the eggs and you bring it over here, the emperor will then blow the sand away, revealing that you can activate it and get them out of here. Sad, sad times. This whole story has become so sad. I was, I, I remember thinking, hey, this is going to be awesome and we might have to have a final battle with the Emperor. This is like way early on and uh, how that's completely changed. I think it's for the better. It also looks like there's some difference on the textures of the Emperor. It looks like those have been updated as well. I think there were a few check-ins that mentioned that. Anyway, so you can also see this platform is now partially covered, which makes sense. It would be, adds a little bit more realism to it. Probably could fade that a bit. Now the Emperor is ready to speak to us. I'm gonna play each sound individually, and I don't know how these are going to correlate to which dialogue. I actually have five different audio clips showing the sounds, and again, I don't know which ones they are, but I'll play them in order, and then play them all together for you guys. Just listen and enjoy. <laughs> Those sounds give me shivers. Ugh, it's so strange. And actually, the first one, if you listen to that carefully, it almost sounds like it's a mix of someone kind of just growling and also like a guitar pluck. You can hear it at the end. Or something, or maybe a pan being hit. I can't tell what the sound is. But again, remember, guys, this isn't the voiceover or the translation that's going to take place by Suzy Q, who I'm assuming is going to do that. These are going to be the sounds that the Emperor is going to make telepathically to you. So I would assume that the Emperor makes a sound, like a growl sound or, or an idle sound, as it's just roaming around. You can kind of see that in the early access trailer at the very end, you can hear the Emperor roar, which will probably change, but I imagine these sounds that we are hearing is actual communication versus just grunts and growls. So these are going to be coming in telepathically. We're going to hear the Emperor talking in its language which will then be translated into a language that we understand, depending on what you're playing, and I'm assuming they're going to have an appropriate translation. And in the logs that were translated that are on the wiki, which again, you can check out in the links in the description below, but it did say that the calls that were coming in were much different than the other ones of indigenous species on this planet. So one can assume that it, it can make normal sounds, but also has intelligent communication when it needs to. And just for fun, let's hear those sounds one more time. And if I'm correct, the Emperor Juveniles are still a little bit wonky. I think in their current state, they, yeah, they don't even appear and they're just flying around completely out of their minds. Oh, there's one. Hey, come here. Come here. It's gone. Anyway, once we get to this part in the story, the Emperor will come over here and blow this away. I don't think at all that that's in the game yet. We got some time before then. Oh, well, hello. Whoa, what are you? And as you can see, the uh, sand is, is, you can go through it, you know, there's, ooh, that's right. So you can actually open up the gate and I'm gonna show you where the teleporter goes because the teleporter is actually going to somewhere that's concrete this time instead of just blasting you off into some random zone. So we're gonna insert our fuel crystal once you collect one of them, which won't be hard. This will activate. You should be good. God, that is creepy. Why did it stop its animations? I guess because I hatched the eggs. That could be it. All right, let me go in here.
And here we are. I'm walking though. I don't think I'm supposed to be walking, but you get the general idea. Here is the array. <laughs> and the teleporter is on top of one of these blocks. But we're on top of one of the blocks here. I'm supposed to be swimming. <laughs> it's just... Uh, I, can't, I can't even get off this now. I can't even go to the array if I wanted to. As I mentioned, I wanted to talk about a, a tweak to the story itself that changes a lot of our understanding of, especially when it comes to the origins of the Karar bacterium. So the very first line of the wiki has been updated to reflect this, and it says the Karar is an alien bacterium discovered by the Precursor race. Originally, we were told that it was created by the Precursor race for unknown reasons. Lots of people assumed that it had to do with biological weaponry that kind of backfired on them and then they had to develop a cure. Some would say it's like population control, which would kind of be the same thing, I guess. But now we see that it's been discovered by the Precursor race, which kind of adds a whole new dynamic to the story itself or how it could really unfold. Because if the Precursors created the bacterium, then it would make sense for us to learn everything about the Precursors as we have been for the most part. But now we're learning about the Precursors on this planet, but have little knowledge of the origins of the bacterium. Now this might reflect later on in the story or in developments where pieces will be put together about how they discovered it. What were they doing when they discovered it? So on. But for now, it's kind of like, wow, there's a whole new storyline. There's a whole new backstory because the, the it didn't start with the precursors. It's kind of insane. And now it's saying that the 143 billion individuals, that number that was in one of the PDAs, that is no longer since it was supposedly created. This is 143 billion individuals died from the bacterium since it was discovered. That means that there are probably tons before then and who's to say that it's only tied to 4546B? It is absolutely something to look into for yourselves. We can discuss this maybe in detail in another episode once we get more concrete uh, data to complete the story in itself. A change like this adds pretty much a whole new level of, uh, of history that we haven't really scanned over just yet. So I'm actually pretty excited to see how that unveils and how we're going to manage to get all of that done before the game is released or uh, at least, you know, finished content wise. But anyway, if you guys want to keep up to date with all the latest news and updates for Subnautica, follow the Trello page. You can also subscribe here. I try to keep you guys up to date as much as possible. And again, huge shout out to Mobius for showing me and allowing me to show you guys the sounds of the Sea Emperor. Be sure to check him out. Links in the description below. Subscribe, watch all the videos. It's awesome, dude. But I'm going to cut the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Like, share, favorite, and subscribe if you haven't already to keep up to date with all my latest videos. I love you all, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.